All right. Good evening, Spartan Nation. McFarland Spartan football on a gorgeous, but kind of very humid Friday evening, September the 20th, 2019. Bill, the big KK there here, will be doing your analysis tonight as I am gladly welcoming back the golden voice of McFarland Athletics, John Wells, tonight, who's had some other duties the first two ball games. So thank you, John, for. I found back my in way here. back. <laughs> yes, you did, and I'm thanking you. I'm sure people are going, thank God, we're maybe going to get a little <laughs> expert commentary here rather than the Kather Garvey combo. But tonight's <laughs> opponent, the wh the Whippets of Whitewater, John. Uh, Whitewater 1-3 and three on the season so far. McFarland coming back to 2-2. Two and two. Uh, The Whippets are coached by Mr. Jason Black. They're a uh, Division three school, about 594 students. McFarland. Coached by Mr. Paul Ackley, a Division II school uh, population, I believe, of about 728 kids, so a little bit bigger. So, But, boy, what another beautiful evening here again for football tonight, John, on a Friday night. A lot of activities going on here. Uh, we got the Little Palms are going to perform, I believe. And, uh, yeah, they had got to be the, about 80 strong out here yeah, earlier. Yep. Yeah. And we got our old little McFarland Family Festival going on here. I got a couple special announcements I'll make about that uh, as we go along here tonight. So a big game here tonight for McFarland. Uh, this would really help push them a little closer to qualifying for the year-end playoffs. And for Whitewater, they definitely need this game to keep their playoff hopes alive. So let me turn it over to you, John, for the opening kickoff tonight. Yeah, Whitewater comes in one and three. Spartans two and two. Whitewater a little thin over there just... Suiting up 27 tonight, I believe only six seniors. Yep, an injury report, uh, Dylan DeClose, 5'9", 160-pound junior, one touchdown recept. And so far uh, this year, will not be playing for the Whippets tonight. So Amrine. Nor Jacob Heritage either, I believe. Ball fielded inside the 10. It's a little bit of running room. Goes out of bounds at near the 22-yard line. So about a 13-yard return for Diego Tovar. Yep. 5'10", 160-pound junior. So the Whippets will put it in play, first and 10. From their 22-yard line, again, it's Friday night, September yep. 20th, 2019. We're going to see triple option out of them, John. With a sophomore quarterback, yep. Brock Rosinski. Yep, Brock Rosinski. He will either... Be a dive to the running back, quarterback keeper, or the pitch option to number five, Will Liebrand, who is quite an athlete. They go triple, speedster. Triple left, pitch back. Got some running room still going. Yep, and there's number five. There's Liebrand. I'll tell you, he's dangerous, Boy, John. 30 yard pickup on the first play from scrimmage for the Whippets. And Bill, you said they came in kind of a must win. You can't ask for much of a better way to start the game than that with a 30-yard run. Several missed tackles, but credit will. Yep. I don't know if it's Liebrand or Liebrand. That's L-E-I, so you call it and we'll go with I it. always John. go by that second vowel. He's a sprinter, too. I believe he has a real, oh, we just lost our picture. There we go. So again, Grasinski, the quarterback. Yep. Ooh, that was straight was ahead, nothing. Oh, handoff there. That's big number 50, Bryce Thompson, 5'10", 245-pound senior. Going to be a loss of four. Going to bring up second down and, yeah, we'll call it, yeah, we'll call it four, so second down 14. There's a look at the Whippets. The only high school team in Wisconsin with the nickname Whippets. And the Maybe one of the few in the United States, not sure. Maybe, just like we, not too far from here, have the only Wanakee in the, in the world, I believe, John. So two to the right, two to the left. Grzynski, just a two-step drop. Got a receiver open in and out of his hands. And that is number 32, Martin Gonzalez. Yep. Coverage there by number three, Michael Suter. Gonzalez is also their kicker, John. He's... Six foot, 180 pound senior. Nine receptions so far for 115 yards on the year for Gonzalez. So we're a minute into the game. Third down and 14 for Whitewater. Ball at their 48 yard line. Boy, is that a clear picture, isn't it, John? It sure is. This is 4D, HD, whatever. 
the highest quality you can get right here. It's a long count. Rasinski going to roll out to his left. Uh -oh. Got a oh. receiver open, oh. and it's overthrown. Number 10, Gehrig Monday. Boy, I love, I'm a, I'm a name person, and I love the word Gehrig Monday, as in Lou. I was going to say, do you think that maybe baseball fan a combination of yep. combination of Lou Gehrig and Rick Monday? Yep, you're right. Love it. And of course, it probably has nothing to do with that. But trivia question for you at home: Lou Gehrig played for whom, and Rick Monday played for whom? We know that Gehrig was the Yankees. Almost Is blocked. Going to be fielded there and dropped. And that's number 12, Tyler Neal. Yep. Six, we do have a penalty marker. Pounder. This could be against the Spartans. Let's see. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Let's see if we can get that back on replay. Then we can take a peek at this and see what happened there. It was a big rush. So Whitewater really gets the first break of the game here. That's going to move it all the way down to the 38-yard line of the Spartans, and it'll be first and 10 Whitewater. Yep, penalty number one. And I said I was going to use this comment tonight, John. I said, we're worried that Tom Brady, if there are too many penalty flags thrown here tonight, <laughs> is going to tweet out again on this ball game that he's turning it off and he's going to not watch it anymore, just like last evening's NFL game where Brady got tired of too many penalties called tweeted out and said he wasn't watching it anymore so not a big promotion of his own league but <laughs> all right john three receivers to, to the right just a single back yep, they're going to throw Krasinski. out of this formation and as soon as i said that straight up the middle i believe that is number 23 aldo soto aldo 5 7 180 yep 46 carries 227 yards Two TDs and one fumble on the year so far, John. Again, Whitewater with one win on the season, a 44 to nothing shellacking of Clinton. Clinton, yep. Clinton still looking for their first win this season. That's number 52, Jonathan Magana over the ball for the Whippets. Again, single back behind Grasinski, second down and 10. Here's a pitch out, bad pitch. Uh -oh. Librand's going to cover it. Back around midfield. Yep, smart decision on his part to not try and pick it up. And that one never really had a chance. Nope. Take a look at this. Yeah, it just slipped out of his hands. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, he's got blazing speed, John. Can't, I'm trying to think when uh, what his time was in the 100 meter dash, but it was. Yeah, that's true. I was here for the conference meet. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's. 5'10", 195. He is a definite speedster. So our receiver to the right, two to the left, two backs now this time behind the sophomore Brock Grosinski. Drops, rolls out. Got a receiver out of the backfield. That's Librand. He'll get back into Spartan territory to about the 45. Going to be way short of the first down as we near the nine-minute mark to go here. Ball's going to be at the 45, so it's going to be fourth down. And they need to get way down to the 27. Got to believe. So 18 Zales, yards. I think, yeah, we'll probably be back in punt formation if with sports was correct and what they well, say. I don't know if it is. It's number 10. And that's uh, Garrick Monday. Garrick Monday. Nice kick. Oh, oh, look at that one. Oh. Oh. Almost like a Bill Cather chip shot there. That yep. one just dropped right there, but that was Gehrig Monday. Nice punt. That looked like about a 60-degree wedge in there, yeah. John. It just didn't quite take the spin. 45-yard punt for number 10, Gehrig Monday, the 6'3", 205-pound senior. So the Spartans will put it in play first and 10 from the 20. Yep. And I kind of know what this first play is going to be here, but I'm not going to let it out of the hat here. And let's see. Two you know the last game, John? It was kind of interesting. The first two plays that the Spartans ran. Oh, where's our picture? 
There we go. So Jeremiah Price Johnson, the quarterback. Yep. Good protection. It down. Forced to run out over the 20. Get out to about the 24, where he's tripped up there by number 42, David Cushman. Yep. Going to see a lot of players going both ways yep. for both teams. Well, defense that time by Whitewater. They run out of a 4-4, 44, kind of an old school defense here. So Salmon will line up to the left. Then we have Neald, Hall, yep. and Schreiber. Schreiber will go in motion. Bryce Johnson going to air it up. Got a receiver. So. Complete. That's Nick Hall. In yep. the Whitewater territory, down to the 41 yard line. Librand with the stop. That is a 35 yard gain. Good adjustment that time by Nick Hall. And I believe I can tell you that was supposed to be the first down play, but it was well covered by Whitewater. So they came right back to it. Offensive guru. Pete Willicott. I guess Bill's going to credit that for 34 in the 34, statute. okay. Bryce Thompson over the ball. 35. Up they got. Goes. Connor Frazier back. Yeah, it's there. about a yard. Yep. Connor, 5'11", 210-pound senior. A lot of skill players back this year for the Spartans. Had to kind of rebuild. They're not kind of. Had to rebuild the offensive line. Definitely. I'm going to go over their names, John, uh, after this play. Had a little fun with some nicknames on the uh, offensive line. All these other kids, I like getting them mentioned. They do all the work up front. They can do. JP Day. Looking. Got a receiver broken up. Neald yep. was there. Nearly picked off. So incomplete, and it'll bring up third down and nine with 6.58 to go yep. in the first quarter. Let me go. Here's our offensive line. We've got Kyle, not west, but east, a six foot two inch, 195 pound junior. Gunther, Gunner Switzer, 5'10, 220 pound sophomore. Bryce, the anchor Thompson, 5'10, 245 pound senior in the middle. Jonathan, Citizen Kane, 5'9, 220 pound senior. And Sean, oh, the lucky charm O'Connor. Six foot, two inch, 220 pound junior. Those are your front five for the McFarland Spartans. And other than Bryce Thompson, not many snaps last year. No, 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 no. On, nope. on the option, Jeremiah Price Johnson near the first down marker. Looks like you might have picked it up, Chad. Very close. Arlen's going to move the. Down marker says four, so it's fourth and one. Spartans right up to the line of scrimmage. Only the official will slow them down here. Yep. Still slowing them down. Fourth and short. Let me just see what's happening to our monitor here, John. Connor Straight Frazier. ahead. Nice Good run. run. Inside the and 20, 15, 10, 5. Gone. Touchdown. 33-yard touchdown run for Connor Frazier with 6.40 to go in the first quarter. Boy, just gets those legs moving, a couple of broken tackles, a little straight arm there at the end. He just pulls the defender into the end zone, and the Spartans strike first. Yep. All head of steam, and I'll tell you, he is tough to bring down. Nice run. Amrein will attempt the extra point. Kick is on the way, and it is right through the upright. 7 nothing, McFarland. Good start, John. Yeah, trying to think. Right. Uh, that was an 80-yard drive. Yep. Didn't take long either with 640. Probably, what, about two-minute drive maybe? Hail. To our Spartans, valiant hail. To our callers, brilliant though. Odds be great or small, we're victors overall. Only got half of in tonight, Garve. Half a tribute to you. Look at our that uh, technology there. Oh, I'll tell you, yep, they use that. That was wow. my tribute every game to the legendary coach, 
band director, whatever here at McFarland High, Badger Bill Garvey. I always do a little Cather karaoke on the school song him at every athletic event I do. So love you, Garve, gone but never forgotten. And just a half a tribute tonight. Sorry, I got a late start on that, but a tribute nevertheless, gone but never forgotten. Okay, John, good start for the Spartans. Very good start. So yep. again, 80-yard drive. Mix it up a little bit. Got the long bomb early to, to Nick Hall. Thir and with the uh, new conference next year, the Spartans will still be playing Whitewater. However, Monroe and Ed Edgewood will come in. Yep. And who's out? Clinton, Bigfoot, Turner, and Broadhead. Yep. So Amrine going to just pop it up. Fielded by number 52, wow. Jonathan McGonna, the center. He was not content <laughs> to just down the ball. He's like, hey, I'm going to run it back. Nor to let that ball drop. He no. said, hey, I'm loving it. Since Pee Wee football, I haven't had a chance to run with this probably. So. The only uh, drawback, nice Bill, is you give the Whippets the ball I agree, at their 44-yard line. Yep, I agree. You shortened the field for Whitewater considerably. Matt's got a pretty good leg. So Grosinski again, two backs behind. Handoff, Soto, out Boy. over midfield, just keeps those legs moving, it's still going. He'll get close to the 48. Stayed low to the ground. 5'7", 180. That's what I was about 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I said this telecast will not only be informative but entertaining. Well, I walk up here into the things, the so. booth and Andrew Day says, "What are you up to?" And I said, "My ideal weight if I was seven feet." <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Yep, Andrew, he's back, isn't he? Huh? Second down and two for the Whippets. A legend, John <laughs> Wells and his storytelling. Aesop <laughs> Wells, we call him once in a while. Ah, uh, huh? yes. Oh, nice Soto again, again, a nice bit of running. Down to the 42-yard line, that'll move the sticks. First and 10, Whitewater. Yeah, nice job that time, John, of being very patient. You know, and as soon as he saw the whole boom, did he explode into it. Well, the word on Whitewater was, you know, not a lot of depth, not a lot of numbers. Again, kind of a rebuilding program, new coach. Um, but tough kids. Oh, yeah. And uh, you. you need that in football. You need those... Uh, Kids that aren't afraid to mix it up a little bit. I'd say get dirty, but you really can't on, yeah, on, on, this, on turf. this turf. <laughs> first and 10 ball at the 43-yard line of the Spartans. 5.29 to go here in the first quarter. Krasinski going to go the other way. Pitch it to Librand. Oh, nice bit of tackling there. That was number one with the initial pursuit cam shaft. Yeah, Librand. He kind of started with a head of steam, and then once the tackle came, he kind of turned a little sideways up that and time. Yep. He wasn't interested in knocking Schaff over. And again, Cam just kept an eye right on his midsection. Yep. and A form tackle, John, would we say? Good fundamentals. Good fundamentals there. Yep. I've mentioned that several times so far. Our, the defensive efforts so far this year on the Spartans have been uh, exceptional, I felt. So long count. Got a receiver. Ooh, oh, boy. Yes. Coverage by number 22, Aiden Irwin. Didn't see the ball. Boy, Aiden Irwin, is he had some responsibilities this year. Against Beloit Turner, he had uh, Dontrell. Oh. Yeah, Aiden turned right at the last minute. The ball intended for Gonzalez. Yep. So incomplete, clock stops, third down and eight. Aiden's taken the uh, best two receivers, best one out of Edgerton, the best one out of Beloit Turner, and covered them in the two games that I did so far. I did a nice job in both those games. So third oh, down. Big opening. Librand's got some running room, going to be tackled there by Michael Suter. Going to be short of the first down. They're going to mark it right at the 35, so it's going to be fourth down and two. And Whitewater will certainly go for uh, it. I believe you are correct, John. I tell you, the kid you got to keep your eye on is number 51 nose guard for the Sp Spartans, Zach Gunderson. 
five seven hundred and fifty five but pound oh. for pound he's just an animal We've out there he's a, him. he's a wrestler yep. and yep he is i don't care how big you are man he is tough so three receivers to the right on this fourth down for Whitewater. Grosinski fumbles it. Ah, pick it up, just pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, if you wanted to be careful there if you were McFarland. Spartans do get it. Yep. So Both they pick confusion. it up and start running with it and drop it. Whitewater could get yeah, the ball absolutely. back. Absolutely, that's why I said that. You gotta be a little careful with that. So and was turnover. That, was that A. Nerwin who came up with the ball, number 22? Now, let's see. You take over after a penalty. Ball's going to be marked. Oh, Neil put a helmet right on the ball. That's balls what the, popped it out. Ball's at the 37. Let's see if uh, Pete's going to air it out. We've got a receiver on the far side of the field. Nobody guarding him. Now, now yep. they're going to get out there. Got Four wides left. Oh, yep. no. Through Jeremiah's hand. Fall on it. And Whitewater's got it. Well, we give it right back. And Whitewater will take over at the 20 yard line. Well, first it was the yep. roughing the kicker call, and now a turnover. Boy, you got to just fall on those, don't you, John? Yeah, it's, again, it's one of those things that's easy for us to say, but yeah, when you're you out there, you're thinking, hey, I can get it. And I can still make a play off of this, but boy. You gotta protect that ball. That so, could be a momentum changer right there, John. For sure. Let's hope not. Spartan defense has really risen to the occasion in the games that I've seen so far, the two ball games. See if Grasinski goes to the air, they yep, run Librand to the right. Yep. Option gonna keep it inside the 15. Gets about a yard more, gang tackled there. Michael Suter with another tackle. Boy, that put our defensive end, uh, the real question there, because if he goes after the quarterback, Rosinski, they pitch it to Liebrand, and with his speed, that could have been six real quick. Yeah, gain of seven, so second and three from the 14 yard line. Boy, you just don't want this to turn into a touch for them. Backs are split behind Grasinski. This is Soto. Oh. Spins. Still going. Still Gets going. down Boy. to about the 10. And a penalty marker. Might it be a face mask? Yeah, that's what you kind of think when somebody keeps driving like that. And it's a late whistle. It's a hold. Ooh, holding. Anybody who's yeah. watched us for years know that <laughs> whatever we think it might be, it's usually opposite, and that is the case. I tell you what, I remember this group of kids playing football at recess back in fifth grade. These yep, seniors. You've seen them. Oh my, it was competitive games. I mean, intense. Which, of course, I like to see, but. As long as they left it out there, John, and didn't bring it, it back into the classroom, that, that right? Was, that, huh? was, that was my attitude, at least. Yep. Penalty's going to move the ball back to the 25 yard line, so that'll make it second down and. About 14. 2.40 to go here in the first quarter. Spartans lead 7-0. I wish they would have kept that scoreboard up at the other end of the field, Yeah, too. I'm still not used to it. Yeah, yep. Hey, a little bit of a breeze here. Yeah, loving it. Again, long count, Grasinski. Forced out, he's got room to run. Passes incomplete. Drop. Boy, he had some room to run. That was Diego Tovar. He did have yeah. some room, didn't he, John? I'm trying to think of a baseball player, Tovar. Tovar, I can't remember. Or Cesar Tovar. Yeah, was it the Reds or the I Twins? I believe you I are can't correct. Can't uh, you're I right. I can't remember. It was one of those two. I'm picturing it on an old baseball card, so yep. that's yep. how my memory works. And 
now I got to look that one up. Did you it's have that one in your bike spokes too? Huh? Yeah, I, if a guy was traded, I crossed it off. Of course, <laughs> the card's not worth anything anymore. But single back this time, two to the right, two to the left. It's third down, and someone jumps. However, was he lured off? He was. Somebody left there. Why is this doing this? Good thing it's overheating. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Would they experience that at home too? Would it black out? No. no, no, no. no? Okay. Just We're just having a little problems with our monitor here up in our booth and that. I was just questioning them to That's, see because I think it's the going. I yeah, think no, it's no. whatever the air conditioner goes on, it goes yep. off. So we've got That's our why we don't have air conditioning. Expert so. tech man. Smiling Ryan Denzer coming up here to check it out. So hopefully. Third down fix. and 18. Grosinski going to air it out. Nope. Going to be incomplete. That was intended for number 32, Martin Gonzalez. Nick Hall on the coverage. And with the help Fourth of a down. couple of penalties here, John, uh, the Spartans might wind up not having that turnover cost them. But we still have one more play here yet. I and hope, I'm assuming uh, the Whitewater Whippets will go for it here. Yep. Hey, let me mention our crew tonight. Off to my left here, we have BB, Benny Bex. Off to my right, we have Lily, Twinkle Twinkle, Ostwinkle. <laughs> we have the Bearded Wonder and the Mastermind, Andrew Day on the board along with smiling Ryan Denzer, our Strat crew tonight. Thumbs up to you, Ryan. Whoa. Big oh. Rush eludes it. Gonna uh -oh. air it out. Oh, oh, almost. Intended for Diego Tovar. Tell you what, give Grosinski credit. Yep. Sh Schreiber goes by. Paul Morris had him. Diving just out of yep. the reach. What an... Awesome replay, replay and great camera work. I'll tell you, John, this awesome. Uh, our staff here is just wonderful. I mean, the, they make it easier for us to broadcast and for you at home to appreciate the games here. It, it's just wonderful. The quality of the picture, the graphics, the replays uh, doesn't get much better than this at the high oh. school level. So Spartans take over at the 30-yard line with 135 to go in the first quarter. Straight ahead, nice gain. Owen About Tran. five yards for Owen Tron. Yep. So Thompson quickly over the ball for the Spartans. They don't waste much time. Nope. Like to get in a little rhythm here, I think, and keep moving. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Price Johnson, gonna tuck it in, gonna run out over the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, still going all the way down to the 31 yard line. Got about a 39 yard. 39 run. yard scamper. But a penalty marker. Uh, I think, and we'll more than likely see holding somewhere. Do you think, John? You know, if it was, we didn't pick it up there, and it was a hold. Yeah. You know. Flag is down at about the 45-yard line. And I, um, I've got to report this, John. I just on my phone, I just picked up a tweet. Tom Brady has just tweeted in. He said, if there is one more penalty called <laughs> that he will tweet out and he will no longer watch our broadcast here tonight, <laughs> which means we could lose our whole, what would that be, our whole northeastern part of the United States viewing audience tonight. Well, we lost our South American off. <laughs> we did, our, uh, yep, audience. when Brett Kather coming back home here. So we, lost, we did lose our South American, our Colombian audience down in South America. Well, here's the deal. The 39-yard run winds up going back to the 45, but still enough yards for the first, first down. down. Yep. Going to air it out again. Boy, look at the coverage. Great blocking for the Spartans. Jeremiah going to do it again, and he's going to run out of bounds inside the 45. 
Should pick up the first down. Yeah, he's now in a... So first down for the Spartans. Yep. 38 seconds to go here in the first quarter. It's been a long first quarter, hasn't it? John? You know, I'm surprised we haven't had any breaks for water for the players. Maybe we'll start seeing that. Good point, John. Second quarter. Because it is humid. Boy, I'll tell you, it's a warm night out here. Two to the right, two to the left. Jeremiah Price Johnson forced out of the pocket. I'm going to keep it again. inside the 40. Out he goes near the 37-yard line. You know, I will tell you, the last game that he played in, too, here, um, he had problems with cramping. Yeah, I on think a night like tonight, you could see more, more kids, you know, with... Got to get some liquids into you. Uh, and we've got an injury timeout with 29 seconds to go here in quarter number one. John, let me quick drop this in here because I've been asking. This is a very special event here. We have Brody's Roar, these blue and white signs we've been seeing around town and that. Uh, Brody, Brad Menner's grandson here in town. Four-year-old boy, second youngest in the United States to be diagnosed with CLN2 Batten disease and the only child in Wisconsin to have this. Very rare in that. And we're attempting to do a little fundraiser for him. Um, there's a big event scheduled for Sunday, October 6th at the Madison Curling Club from 11 in the morning till six at night. All kinds of activities for kids, foods, games, you name it, John. So really like to see a lot of people at that. And also they do have a tent up at the family festival. And I do wanna mention that at that tent, you can purchase corn stalks and get ready for your Halloween in that, $7 or two for $10, and they'll even deliver those to your home if you let them know at the tent. They are also selling yard signs as a donation for $10, as well as T-shirts, $10, and they have youth sizes, um, you know, women's sizes and everything else. So please, what a wonderful uh, fundraiser and cause that is, and I said I'll mention it again later on, Brody's Roar get to the tent, make a donation, show up on October the 6th also, and help this uh, young man. And a fumble, ball knocked out of Connor Frazier's hand. And it's covered there by number 52, Jonathan Kane. Clock's gonna run out here in the first quarter, so one quarter almost in the books here. It's the Spartans seven, the whip it's nothing. Here we take a look. And he's got both hands on the ball, but just slips out. So, you know, that's where you kind of wonder, John, with the humidity here and that. Uh, but anyways, at least for a start for the Spartans, seven nothing. They're on their way to hopefully getting a real important victory for them here tonight, John. I want to also mention tonight there are four ways to view this game. Some of you again right now are watching on cable 982 in McFarland as well as you can go to the Mc Village of McFarland website and there will be a link to view this game at a later date, as well as a lot of you are watching on our YouTube website. It's YouTube McFarland Cable. You can watch that live right now. Some of you are streaming live. You can watch it later tonight, tomorrow, next week, this summer, next year or something. So please, YouTube McFarland Cable and you know these make such great memories for these kids and everybody kind of gets a kick out of it you know in other schools i know even tune in and watch watch our games in that just because of the the fun that we have as well as you know kind of taking a look at maybe a future opponent either mcfarland or the team they're playing in that so but anyways uh, you know hats off again to smiling ryan denzer the mastermind the bearded wonder andrew day there's a look at our band and the yep. dance ben team. Benny Bex and BB and Lily Twinkle Twinkle Us Twinkle to my right. So again, thank you guys. Do a wonderful job here. Well, Whitewater's got to be happy where they're at at this point in the game, down just one touchdown. But again, the Spartans got to feel fortunate, right, to be up a couple of uh, miscues. A couple of miscues on the yep. Roughing the kicker and then the fumble. Yep. But the defense up for the call. So third down and eight, ball at the 41 yard line. Oh, not a smooth handoff yep. at all. Jeremiah yeah. and 
Connor kind of run into each other, kind of, they did yep, run yep. into each other, and that play goes nowhere. In fact, it's going to lose a yard to make it fourth and nine, and looks like Smartens will kick it away. We'll bring on number six, Matt Amrine. He's done a nice job this year, Matt has. His first year kicking for the Spartans. He's just a junior. Yep. Good snap. Nice kick. And that is going oh, to go out of the out of bounds. Beautiful. Inside the five, right at the five. And for those that? of you watching at home, that went into what corner, John? In old school lingo, the punt went into the what corner? Not sure. Coffin oh. corner. John, I can't believe you could didn't come up with that, huh? Thirty seven. Isn't that what they used to call it? It huh? is, it is. Yep. For you old schoolers out there when you could punt it, I believe it was like inside like the five yard line and out of bounds. Into the coffin corner. But beautiful kick that time by Matt. Thirty seven yard punt. Yep. And now Spartan defense will be looking for a TO, another one, if they can get one here. So Whitewater. First and ten from their own five. And off, Lybrand, collared there, still drives himself forward. A couple of yards. Five carries for 36 yards, but his first carry of the game was 30 yards, and since then he hasn't done a whole lot, John. Got a couple there, so second yep. down and eight. Clock is stopped. Boy, John, I'm really enjoying this, just being able to sit back and <laughs> kind of just keep my stats. Yeah, you're going to miss the next game. That's, you'll be nah, back. I'm, you'll I'm be thinking that I'm going to see. I, I think I'm going to miss it, but, you know, they never they say never say never, right? That's right. That's 23, Aldo Soto over the 10. Going to be shy of the first down, yep. so it's going to bring up third down and three. He's had four carries for 22 yards. So Arlen far. Halverson over there with the ball mark. Maybe we can get a shot of Arlen at some time with the down marker over there. He's been doing that a lot of a lot of years. Yes, he has. Jerry Herps must be over there somewhere yep, too. Jerry's I'm over guessing. there. Yep. Third down and three. Trips left. See if we can get a stop. Likely passing down, but we'll see. Grosinski turns it up, going to be close to the first down. He might have gotten it. I think he did. It's right on the 15, just a little over the 15-yard line. Uh, going to give it to him, Chad? Yep, they did. So credit the sophomore quarterback, Brock, Brock Grosinski. Yep. 6'1", 185, good-sized sophomore. There's Arlen. Yep. Thank you. Again, that's our staff, isn't it? They're right we on ask it. ask, and they deliver, right? That's right. Rosinski. Over to Monday. That should be a fumble. Ooh. Oh, no. Incomplete pass. Sideline official yeah. signaling. Well, I thought he almost or, brought it down to run. Or the question was, was it backwards also, John? We pull that up on a replay. Let's see, he's at the 19. No. Ooh, ah, close. That was very close. But it's incomplete. Second down and 10. Yeah, my initial thought was he caught it and ran with it, but not the case. Lee Brandt. Cuts it up. Nice oh. defense. Number Dick. six, yeah. Matt Amrine. Yeah, boy, did he see that coming. Beautiful read that time. I'll tell you, John, this defense of the Spartans has been very impressive this year. I know I, I said on the first two games that I did, I just couldn't keep commenting on I thought how, especially the the fundamental football that they that they played, the tackles, just the positioning. They stay at home. 
you know, which is so important when you get all these misdirections. Or well coached. Yep, yep, very well coached. So big Especially play here, third down and 12, yep. Bill, from the 13. Again, only four returning starters on defense for the Spartans at the start of this year. Rosinski going to uh, air it out. out. Oh, and no chance on that. That was probably closer to Doug Peterson there on the sideline yep. than anybody else. Martin Gonzalez got held up by two defenders. And but, you know, sometimes forward. you throw it up there and you let the receiver run underneath it. Yep. But just threw it a little too far. So now the Spartans, you know, nine minutes to go in the first half, only with a 7 nothing lead. They got to look to punch that ball in again here. Yeah, so absolutely, John. See if we can get a block. Garrick Monday back to punt almost. And where'd that ball where'd go? Ball Whoa, go? it kind of lost sight of it there. Sparns are going to get outstanding field position. That was only about a 12 yard punt. Yeah, wound up at the 27. There's no wind to speak of. Nope. I think he just popped it up and it rolled backwards. We actually kind of lost that one in the lights, so. Yep. That's our excuse. <laughs> you are correct. So Spartans first and 10. Let's see if we throw to the end zone here on the first play. Let's see what. Tron oh, in the backfield. See Pete Willicott's guy. Oh, oh, that's incomplete. Yeah, a little low throw. Tended for Hall. two, Nick Hall. Yeah, here's a look at that. Yeah, just, just a little wild. He was there, but thing. just led him a little too far. Yep. So 847. We've got to put the ball in the end zone here. Again, one possession game. I agree. That's all it takes to get somebody with Lee Brand's speed. I mean, he could break one at any time and go the leg distance. It's a little inside Jet reverse. Yep. Hall's got some room. Nice move inside the 20, 15. Still going. Nice. Thrown out of bounds or close to out of bounds around the 10 yard line. Monday with the stop. Nice run by Hall. Yep, Nick, very elusive. I'll tell you, he helped out by quarterback in there the first couple of games, so now he's back at his natural spot at end. About a what? But about they, a 16 yard run there? Yep, they like that jet sweep with him. Oh, they're do it again. It again. This time uh -oh, there's a penalty uh, marker. We're going to have a hold, and that's coming back. We got two holds. You know what? And everybody here didn't even get excited as he was running to the end zone. Yeah, we had a hold on the outside, and I think we had a hold initially. Boy, Nick can be elusive. Yeah, I think that hold, the second hold came close to the end of the play. Maybe we'll see a replay on that and see if, of course, we're assuming <laughs> there's two holds here. All right, we're one for two, John. I didn't hear the first one, but. Oh, if I'm liking this little breeze, John, are you feeling that? Either through? way. Benny Bex is nodding his head yes to our camera at the left. Yeah, my program's getting uh, wet here from. Procedure was knocked up and holding. They'll take the hold, and that'll move the ball back to around the 20. Just inside. We'll call it the 19. Yep. So it'll be first and 18. So let's see if we can get something going offensively here. Just haven't really been consistent. No, the game's really slowed down, hasn't it, John? It's, uh, yeah, it's Jeremiah. Tended for Hall, too high, incomplete. Taking a look out here also for Jacob Seven. Well, I'll tell you, Jacob's got some nice speed out here too. First ball game I did. I mean, if he gets it out in the open, he's gone too. Up oh, a little too high. So second down, 17 for the Spartans. 8.21 to go here. Game has really slowed down. Yeah, it has. 
I hate to say admit this, I know you can't see it, but I was just caught yawning. Tron gets back to the line of scrimmage, and so now it's third down in a bunch. Offense uh, getting a little stagnant here. Yeah, it's like this game just all of a sudden has gone to slow motion, hasn't it, John? Crowd not into it. Yeah. So may we need that big play right yep. here. We haven't even heard the students here again tonight. No, I had to just no. lean out and look and see if they were still there. Yeah. That's yeah, the first high school football game I've seen this year. This is? Yeah, it's just fun. always a fun Friday nights. Jeremiah going to go into the end zone complete. There it was, That's Nick Hall. That's all we needed, John. That got the crowd livened up. Second score for the Spartans here was 7-34. A 19-yard touchdown pass. Jeremiah Price Johnson to Nick Hall. Makes the score 13 nothing. That's what we needed. Yep. Liven things up. Tell you what, we see that. Just not used to seeing a parking lot on the opposite yeah, side of the no. field. Of course, it's been the baseball field forever. Kick is on the way. It is good. Sneaks through. So Amrine's kick makes it 14 nothing. Again, 7-34 to go here in the first half. Yep, let me just say this right now, McFarland Cable TV, channel 982, is a function of the village of McFarland and is producing high school sports as a result of a community survey and fan interest, indicating viewers like you at home as well as fans in attendance desire this type of programming. I encourage you to inform your village officials by way of an email, phone call, how much you enjoy these high quality productions. The positive efforts of our McFarland youth deserves to be recognized in all forms of media. The State Journal, The Thistle, Cable Channel 982, as well as our website, YouTube, McFarland Cable. So once again, to everybody, thanks for your support, and please let our village officials know just how much you appreciate this. Yeah, I tell you, you know, in, in McFarland on cable, you can see uh, events from Stoughton and Oregon, Monona Grove. Yep. It's great that we're uh, right there keeping up with them. and Trying, John. Even saw a game last week. I guess I've seen a few on cable. Saw Verona and West play. It's the first time I've seen a Verona eh, game on one of the. Probably wasn't a real close ball game, was it? I think it was like 21 to nothing, maybe, or 21 to seven. It was on a Fitchburg cable station. Uh -huh. Yeah, Verona's got a pretty good ball club this year. Amrine's got it teed up. Return men deep at about their 10-yard line. See if we let him just kick her away, and we will. Nice kick. Yeah. So Field it at the 10, juggles it. This is number 22, Tovar. He'll come out to the 25-yard line. Number 30 there on the stop. That is Chase Quell. Yep. And a boy, Chase. Little trivia question. I taught both his mother and his father sat in my eighth grade English classroom many moons ago. Back in the Winnequa days, right? Yep, yep. Back over in Monona. So, hello to you, Michelle and Mark. So, Whitewater, first and 10 from their 25. Spartans lead 14 0. Backs are split behind Grosinski. Handoff straight ahead. That's Soto. He'll get out just shy of the 30-yard line. Nice little runner, isn't he, John? He is. Again, like we said, tough kid, low yep. to the ground. Yep, five carries for 27 five yards five. so far. Gain of five, so second down and five as we near the seven-minute mark to go here in the first half. Again, it's Friday night, September 20th, 2019. In case you're watching this in 10 years and <laughs> wondering... I might what be watching, football is. I might be watching it at the home that <laughs> I'm residing in at that time, John. Saying, I think that was me talking there with John Wells. <laughs> Grosinski going to air it out. Got a receiver. Comes back to get the ball. Flag is down. Uh, now who's the interference side? I'm going to guess it's going to go against the Spartans. Martin Gonzalez on the catch. It's a good 30-yard gain. Let's see. Yep. So again, Grasinski, fake to his right, airs it out. 
And again, nice catch by Gonzalez. Yep. Just kind of got Aiden Irwin turned around, got his back the ball, couldn't locate it, and Gonzalez still. See if Whitewater continues to go to the air. They've had some success with getting receivers open, but just not able to complete the pass. Right. Yep. So first and 10 from the Spartan. Again, credit this McFarland defense to that, John. From the 39. That's not Come Soto, a nice tackle around the ankles there by Neal. Again, I'll tell you. Tyler Sheen Neal, nickname than that. It's gonna be a loss of five back to the 44 yard line, so second down and 15. Nice low tackle, huh, John? Boy, you could check see out it. those Whitewater helmets. They've got the dog on the side of the helmet. Yeah, yeah. Whippet is a greyhound type dog. Used to have dog tracks in Wisconsin. Yep, used to. Biggest mistake the state ever made, not going with a horse track. But that's another editorial <laughs> that I have. And we'll see if we have time for that tonight. Grosinski, here's uh, a penalty. That's going to be a hold. He's going to turn it up, get down to about the 37. This one should be coming back. Boy, penalties have just killed Whitewater. Any kind of drive that they've tried to put together, even on the turnover, if they got deep in McFarland territory, they won't go in the other direction. That's like Whitewater just hasn't been able to put two solid plays together right. back to back. But then again, Spartans haven't Done. really had that consistency no. offensively either. You know, and I got to believe that flag was thrown right in the middle of the line. And who do you think was probably held there? I think you're looking at him. Number 51, Zach, Zach Gunderson. Gunderson. Five foot seven inch, 155 pound. Very, junior. very driven, good wrestler. Yeah. Tell you what, there's just something about those wrestlers who play football. That aggressiveness carries from one sport to the other. And yep. we don't have a whole lot of wrestlers, so. No. Ball now back to the 44 of Whitewater. And since we have the McNona wrestling team, right? MGM, the little kids call it, I guess. And Grosinski, good rush. Fumble, who's on it? I think we've got it. has got it. You know, Brock Grosinski, that's his second fumble of the game. And coming in, he had three fumbles previously. Let's to this. see who got uh, that one. I know 58 Jack O'Connor was there. He was. And the one that forced Grosinski. Grosinski oh. just dropped it on his yep, own. Yep. Bounced off his hip. And Here comes O'Connor. Did he get it? He did. Yep. Jack O'Connor. Visions of his dad, John, back in his days at Rockford Boylan. <laughs> there we go. I love it, John. So Was Jack he all conference, all state? I don't know if he played. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that's where he went to, to school. school. Oh, you could have made something up because nobody would know. Yeah, we actually have had, at the time, two of our staff members at Wabisa who were Boylan grads. Frazier up the middle, bowls his way forward, down to the 36-yard line. Five carries for 31 yards. Yeah, just, uh, just inside the 37. Try to get another score here, 4.50 to go in the half. Number eight, Jeremiah Price Johnson, the senior, 25, Connor Frazier, also a senior, 5'11", 210. Forced back inside, but churns it upfield, down around forward progress should take him to the 33. Gonna be short of the first down. Now the... Spartans are going to have to think about using a timeout at some point here. We're at 4.15. This is a big third down play. Yep. It would be nice to punch one more in here, Jen, before halftime. Nice if you can get a three-score separation. Especially when you're playing to become playoff eligible. Option and a Holding. penalty. This is coming back. And... We just, I believe, lost Tom Brady on our viewing. 
tonight. Seems like any time we've done anything outside, yep. we're getting a holding call. Yep. See if we can see this. Probably won't see this one again. Nice run, though. Thanks, Coach Ackley, kind of talking there with the sideline officials saying, hey. Well, we've had several holding penalties tonight. Yeah. I'm just happy we have officials out here. I, I, Boy, I'll I, never right be there, critical John. anymore. Nope. We're, I heard something the other night from a member of the media talking about how the number of officials is up in Wisconsin in general sports, but the majority of the new officials do not want to do varsity games, which mm -hmm. is another issue. Uh, absolutely. Another penalty. Another one. Complete to Neal. He'll get tackled around the 35. But and that's going to be coming back. So, yeah, officials that really don't want to do the varsity games, it's going to be a hold. And I'll tell you what, what's, what's going to wind up happening is you're going to see at the smaller school levels where the varsity girls and boys are playing back-to-back -back on the same nights with the same officiating crew. However, I have no sympathy for the WIAA when it comes to official shortages. You don't need three officials for a high school game. Absolutely. And if Absolutely. you've got a shortage and you're – forcing schools to pay for three officials yes you can get by with two yep so i don't really buy that i think i think you do see a definite shortage though in football and a number of uh milwaukee area conferences going to more thursday night games so it can spread yeah, out absolutely officials. sure that's I think we had a big eight game, was it, last week, moved to a Saturday night. Uh, or you're going to see Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening yep. games. You're right, because it just kind of book these officials in. Can't play without them, John, can you? Third and 34. Nick Hall's got it. Inside the 30, inside the 20, turns on the burners there, and he's all the way down to the 10-yard line. A 66-yard pass completion. Correction. I think that's a 56-yard completion. Yeah. That new math threw me <laughs> off there a little bit. Oh, I teach math. That's right. Nice job by Nick Hall. And a nicely thrown <laughs> ball by Jeremiah. <laughs> now that would be interesting. First and ten from the eleven. Thank Frazier. you very much for the text that just came in. I appreciate our one of our home home viewers. Feel free to text us at any time with any comments. I could see the three of us doing basketball. Now don't one mention could, any names. No, one could stand at half court. Yep. The other two would stand on the baseline. Heck, we could do that all night. I it's, think you're right. And we would be more than fair. Sometimes you see crews like that. So, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so second down at seven. Oh. Wide open. The X-Man. Oh. Yep. Xavier Schreiber, 6'2", 210-pound senior. Wide open. Nice call. Nice play call. By the OC, Mr. Pete Willicott. So 235 to go here in the first half. Now 20 to nothing. We can now give a shout out also to the Arntz watching in Slinger, Wisconsin, the in-laws, I believe, of offensive coordinator Willicott. Ball Time on the clock, placed. John, is. So with 2.35 to go in the first half, it's now McFarland 21, Whitewater nothing. Again, Friday night, September 20th, 2019. John Wells, Bill Cather here. Yep. John, I'm going to give another quick shout out here because I don't want to, if this game gets going a little too much out of control, and then I definitely want to make another shout out here on this, especially uh, this Brody's Roar fundraiser because this is such an important thing for this uh, fine young little four year old boy who's just fighting a, a, a real tough situation here. And we've got a really neat fundraiser again coming up on Sunday, October 6th at the Curling Club, 11 to 6. Get over there if you can on that day. Everything for things to do for young kids to adults 
food, games, you name it, uh, get over there. But especially even tonight and tomorrow and Sunday at the Family Festival, there is a tent with Brody's Roar on it. There you can purchase corn stalks for your Halloween decorations, $7 for one, two for $10. They will deliver those to your home. Yard signs will be on sale for a $10 donation and T-shirts for a $10 donation. They have everything from youth sizes to women's sizes to everything. So please visit that tent and kick in for a real worthwhile cause here and uh, help this family and Brody out in his fight against CLNL2 Batten disease, which is a very rare disease. The only kid in Wisconsin that uh, has this disease. So get down there and help out. Brody's Roar. So Amrine's kick through the end zone. So Whitewater will take it over at their 20 yard line. Yep. Yeah, it's a good opportunity for the McFarland community to come together. Oh, for sure, John. You know, they support things even like uh, Allie's Honky Tonk Hustle Fun Run for, boy, she was our neighbor for many years in that. Uh, as a matter of fact, Brett even did the eulogy at her funeral and that. Just horrible cancer took her life away at a young age and that. And, boy, this community really came together and still does for her fundraiser every year. So help us out. Brody's Roar. Pass complete. That is Tovar. It's out to right to the 25. Whitewater not wasting any time up to the line of scrimmage. Nope, they don't have time to waste. They got to see if they can get some points on the board here, John. The they just got to make sure they don't turn it over. Yep. Ooh. Oof. Could have been right there through the hands of Gonzalez. Yep. Nick Hall, you know, another yard closer to Gonzalez, probably would have wound up with that one. Yep. Actually, they have not helped Grozinski a lot tonight. Uh, been quite a few little drop passes. Yeah, it's a lot kind of, of interesting these. when you're a sophomore quarterback of a high school football team, John. And again, they've they've had some turnover at the coaching level, and uh -huh, yep. they're just trying to get something established. Picked up a nice win over Clinton this year. And yep. Yep. It takes time. It's uh, absolutely. And it doesn't just start at the high school level, John. Well, I tell you, in Whitewater, you got you got some pretty good resources you can tap into. Does that ball get loose? And Whitewater gets it. Yep. Timeout, McFarland. Good timeout by. Yeah, I tell you though, officiating is. You know, you talk about high school athletics and challenges they face and officiating is is huge and I don't know if people realize how difficult it is to find officials there was a game last year Bill in Northwest Illinois where one of the one of the games had to be moved up to five o'clock on a Friday because the same officiating crew had to be at another game about 12 miles away at eight and I mean that tells you that it's not just a issue we he see here in Wisconsin. Right. It, it's an issue all over, nationwide. Not to mention the abuse that officials can take. Football, you're a little distanced from the crowd, but I tell you, basketball. I mean, crowds right on top of you. And of course, I was one of the worst as a coach, and I look back at that and think, geez, but. That doesn't help Uncalled get for people officiating. Yep. Whitewater's going to have to kick it away. Low snap. Monday's going to get it off. It's going to roll. Oh, Nick thought about it, but it's going to roll dead at the 44. Oh, nice kick. 150 to go. And let's see what offensive coordinator... Pete Willicott's going to come up with here if we're going to try and push in another quick seven here. I think we do. I think that's what they're going to go for also. You know, I tell you what, we haven't seen anything thrown to Jacob Semin yet. No, our, uh, he's our, one of our speedsters also. Also 21, Donovan Hudson. I'm going to say you might just see Jacob Semin right here. 
Probably he's on a fly pattern or maybe even a little bubble screen and just get him out there one on one. Oh, well. That's probably not a real good start no, if you're looking for a drive with. That's not good for anyone. No. Clock is rolling. Spartans with. And they may three just. Three timeouts. Huh. Uh, you got to eat when there's food on the table here. I mean, you got an opportunity. Try to score. Oof, I like that little saying. Just made it up. You got to eat when there's food on the table. Half the lines I hear are from the old Andy <laughs> Griffith show. <laughs> Well, Jeremiah. Golly, John. Ooh. Hall near the first down marker. Uh, actually, that was. Will yeah. Lybrand. So no, Tackled him high. It looked worse than it was, and Will yep. kind of gave him a little pat in the shoulders. Going to be short, according to Arlen Halverson over there. He's got the three. It's 10 yards, John. They had 18 to go. That was an eight yeah. yard completion. Oh, I don't know how that was short. Oh, Arlen must have stepped back there, the uh, guy with the marker. So third and short. Excuse me, third and ten. ten. That's why. I'm off. John, it's this new math. It's well, look at this. Donovan, Donovan Hudson. Hudson. Wow. I'll tell you what, it looked like, yards. it looked like Jeremiah was way past the line of scrimmage. 57 yard touchdown pass. We did mention Donovan's name. See a replay on that, because that ball was at the 43. See where Jeremiah throws it from. That was close, close. but behind the line. Nice job by Donovan. And like we said, food on the table you eat, and the Spartans <laughs> eat well with 28 <laughs> seconds to go. They're up 27 nothing. Good snap ball place, kick is on the way and good. Four for four for Matt Amrine. And McFarland goes up 28, nothing. Another big strike play. Time. So 28 seconds to go. Third touchdown pass, Bill? Yep. So recap the scoring so far we got in the first quarter at 640 of the first quarter 33 yard touchdown run by connor frazier extra point good at arm ryan seven nothing three scores for your spartans in the second quarter 734 mark jpj to nick hall 19 yard pass extra point good 14 to nothing mcfarland at the 235 mark jpj again second touchdown pass this time to xavier schreiber 10 yard pass Extra point good by Matt Armine. McFarland 21, Whitewater nothing. And with just 28 seconds here, as we just saw, left in the first half, JPJ, Jeremiah Price Johnson, a 57 yard pass to Donovan Hudson. Matt Armine with the extra point, and that puts us at 28 to nothing. And I believe I'm going to make, I'm going to go way out on a limb and say, I believe that'll be our halftime score. According to the graphics, it already is. It already is. is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now, if they run the kick back. Oh, Andrew Day back there <laughs> celebrating. Huh, did you catch that halftime graphic that we put up there? Love the graphic. Well, he probably heard me say that I was saying that I was going out on a limb and saying that would be the halftime score, so he probably oh, just oh. picked up on that. We're replaying it now, so. Oh, okay. I think these are Stephanie Miller graphics. Yep. By the way, hi to her parents if they're watching tonight up in Wausau, Wisconsin. She does not have them. Uh, also, a shout out tonight yet. to uh, Brad Minner watching at home, I'm sure, tonight. So, and legend. Live ball. Gonzalez is going to pick it up over the 20, 25, 30, still going. 35, finally taken down at the 36 yard line by the kicker. Matt Amrine. Yep. yep, family festival weekend. First family fest, uh, new location this year yeah, down at the Village Hall. and Village Hall and the library. And yeah, it's interesting use of space. Uh, being a morning walker, it's been fun because the other morning I walked down there and there were 12 semis lined up on Anthony Street <laughs> ready to start setting things up. Yep. 
Christman Amusements from the beautiful city of Watoma here really? in town this week. Okay. Thank you, John, for that info. All of the carnivals are from about a 10-mile range yep. up there in Wapaka and Watoma. And nice little run for Soto. Look at this. Whitewater, though, no quitting the dogs here. 12 seconds to go. Seven rushes for 34 yards for all those. I tell so you what, though, I like I like the coaching going on on the Whitewater side. Yeah, you're down 28 to nothing, Chad. but it's not one of these, ah, let's just down the ball. I mean, yep. they're looking for improvement on every possession. Yep. Score, okay, 28 to nothing, but they're looking at, at improvement. And as coaches, they know what they see day in and day out. And. You know, it might be a certain block or something like that that we and the average fan certainly don't notice. But And who benefits the most? The, the kids. players. The kids, and that's what this is all about. We did a volleyball game the other night, and it was fun to watch the coaches from McFarland and from Edgerton, the, the amount of teaching they did during mm -hmm. timeouts. And this is an extension of the classroom, except you've got, and not 600 people in the right. stands that are watching you do yep. your job and think they can do it better oftentimes. Yep. And, but it's an extension of the classroom. and Absolutely. And also the, your assistant coaches. Boy, it's really nice to see. You know, I look down the sidelines. Kids are coming off, and I see the McFarland, even uh, the volunteer helpers. You know, you got Tyler Weedle, you got Craig Howry, and, you know, <laughs> what a nice deal on say that. Gunderson. It, it's like that event you see in the rodeo where they have to take those. Yep. And we are at halftime, John. He just collared him, threw him down, and, well, Bill, we've got a half in the books, and Spartans are up 28-0 over the Whitewater Whippets. Again, it's Friday, September 19th, 20th, sorry. Yep. And 2019. John. We're hey, gonna, there's a volunteer assistant, Craig Howery, on the yep, sidelines. Yep. And I think we're going to step out here at halftime. You're more than welcome to watch the Palms, the Young Palms, the band. And we'll be back, what, John, in probably about eight, nine minutes for the second half. Hopefully of the air condition game. will be working. Then, so. Yep, hopefully so. Hope you enjoyed the first half of action. And... John Wells, Bill Cather, we will be back for your second half of McFarland football shortly. It's what I picture the weather in like Vietnam or some Southeast Asian country yeah. being like with this humidity. Yeah. It's Lloyd Schneider Stadium and William Rice Field, John. It's gotten worse, I think, as the game's gone yeah, on. Yeah, every once in a while we get a little breeze that comes in here, but outside of that, this has been... Like a sauna, which at my weight, I'm kind of appreciating here tonight. Yeah, there's a little pooch kick. Ball is live. And we cover it at the 35. <laughs> That's Here, number 52, Jonathan Kane. This would be a big step to help McFarland. This would give them their third conference win, meaning two more are needed, John, to get into that playoff. You're in playoff picture in Whitewater. This would be another big setback for them. That would leave them at one and four with a loss tonight. Meaning, keep, keep your eye on he's got to number run the table. four yep. here. Yep, number four. Let's look see at Xavier Schreiber. That's our bet. Let's see if they send him on the fly. Air it out, and this went to Nick Hall. He's got uh -oh. it. Uh oh, and Nick Hall. Look elusive. at that running. How elusive is Nick 2015. Hall? down to the 13. 13. Yeah, they were looking for uh, the X-Man, Schreiber. Schreiber. Instead, Hall is open. So, boy, Jeremiah's completed some long passes here. Yeah, Schreiber, number four, was covered. Yep, so he just picked out Nick Hall and like four gentlemen running fly patterns right down the field. So, doesn't matter who it goes to. That was about a 65-yard gain, John. Oh, this is a live uh -oh. ball. <laughs> Frazier wow. got it. Ooh, knocked down. Nice tackle there by number 50. Yeah, 
That's about that's a five That's Carter loss. Friend. Boy, and that would have been a fumble had he mishandled that because that was a backward toss. So ball at the 18, they need to get to the, just inside the five, so we'll call yep. it second down. Boy, one of my and keys to the next game would have been uh, Whitewater need to stop McFarland's big plays. And boy, they definitely haven't done that. Oh, and Tron. The ball carrier. Third carry for nine yards so far tonight. Got a little action here. That's okay for Owen Tron. Third and 14. Let's see if we go back to the air. Owen Tron, a five foot six inch, 145 pound junior, John. I think they're going to go to Schreiber now. Let's see. Yep, let's see. Oh, he got knocked off coming over the middle. And he spins near the first down. Boy, we could Someone hear, in the booth we was. We could hear the Whitewater coach. Someone was yelling a for a hold. Down, yep. So going to be short of the first down. So fourth down and two. Ten minutes to go here in quarter number three. Spartans up 28 nothing. I'll tell you, the X-Man, Xavier Schreiber, came across that middle that time and just got decked. There's no way he was getting out in that pattern. Johnson rolls out. Throws it at the last second uh, to Schreiber to the for the touchdown. Yeah. 9.38 to go here in the third quarter. It's a six yard touchdown pass. Is that our fourth touchdown pass for yep. Jeremiah? Yep. And again, a good choice. Second touchdown pass to Schreiber at 10 and a six yard toss. Well, he gets close to that line of scrimmage, doesn't he? Let's yep. take a look here again. Yeah, about yard behind. Schreiber all alone. Snap, placement, kick is on the way and it is good. So five in a row for Matt Amrine. I can't tell you how important that is too, John, because you see a lot of high school games, well, Look at last week, we had to really like the decision that offensive coordinator Pete Willicott made to go for two down at East Troy last week and give an undefeated East Troy team their first loss of the season in that. And that's, you know what? You really get kids in a team behind you when you're willing to do that too. Well, it tells you, you have, you believe in them. You have Absolutely, confidence. Absolutely, yep. You get these, some of these college games and it's like play to win. They'll just keep kicking the extra points. And I think maybe the rule has changed now on how many times that can happen. But yep. yeah, you drive all the way to East Troy, you got to play to win and it's what they did. You gotta love those Whitewater helmets. The the W with the, yep. the whip it. Oh, John, I should say, I got some scores in here from some other games here tonight in the Rock Valley Conference. We're at 17 to seven at halftime, 10 to three, and also in the Rock Valley, uh, that just came across the board uh, 24 to 10. So actually, we'll keep uh, you updated on those games. Actually, I do have here. a real score, and it's well, Edgerton 14, Jefferson seven late in the third quarter. You do, and I'm trying to get the Broadhead Beloit Turner score from my son down there, but hasn't reported back to me yet. An Edgerton win would put them to four and one. Nice kick yep. by Amrine. Yep. Gonzalez is going to come out of there. Spins over the 20. Gang tackle. Suitors there. Look at that sportsmanship. There's Gunderson. I like that. Also number 20, Eric Anderson. I know sometimes you're going to say, oh, yeah, it's great to have sportsmanship when you're at 35 to nothing. But I have seen this in the games that I've done. Two previous games, John, when you when you weren't here, and I comment on sportsmanship in both of those games. From what I saw of kids on both sides of the ball, so no matter what the score in that, you just it's, it's all about learn how to become a better citizen, a better person. So those life lessons learned yes, in, in is, athletics. John. Yep. So straight ahead, nice tackle there by number fifty-eight, Jack O'Connor. John, I must mention this to you. What about running clock? We are at 35 to nothing. 
You know, the rule in Illinois is 40. It is. And I, I'm not sure it starts until the fourth quarter, but Okay. It is 35 nothing, and I guess I haven't really paid much attention. Well, to we'll have to see. Just keep an eye on that clock and see if. Second down and nine. Low snap. Brzezinski going to air it up. Got a receiver. Oh, tipped away at the last second by Aiden Irwin. Intended for Gonzalez. I'll tell you, Grosinski heard that baby out. That was from the yeah, he's got a nice 16 arm and yard line. Good coverage. Yep. Look at that camera work. Again, just outstanding. Yep. Yeah, you got to like uh, Brock Grosinski. Again, 6'1", 185 pounds, sophomore. Yep. It's a pretty darn well thrown ball there. Lilly Third down and nine. The clock is running. Yep. Lily Aswinkle and Benny Bex on our cameras. Expert. Thank you very much, you two. You're doing a wonderful job here tonight. Oh, that Matt didn't Grosinski go anywhere. He is going to get buried. Jack O'Connor again. I, I have to say this. I mean, for having only four. Returners on defense, John. This is they've done, really put together done you know, a lot of good things. Yeah. And this, hey, we've I'm got uh, we've got some teams having pretty good falls again this year. Our boys soccer team and yep. girls swimming, girls volleyball, boys soccer. Good numbers in. Uh oh, Whitewater's got it. Yep. Right through his hands, Josh Toms is there. A yeah, sophomore, number two, to pick it up. And a break for Whitewater. They'll get the ball at Spartan 48-yard line. Yeah, we've had the opportunity to do a couple of volleyball broadcasts. Very impressed with the girls and Dave Harris doing the soccer yep. games. They picked up a win last night over Evansville, 3-0. Really playing, uh, really up their they've, schedule they've this year. They've up their schedule playing Oregon, Madison Memorial. Yep, right? East, yep. Verona. I mean, that's it's going to help you come tournament time. Look at this. Uh-oh, that could be you know, not a late hit. It was close. It's Gary Monday, number 10. Paul Morris could have been whistled for a late hit there, but. Whitewater now on the move. And again, no quit in Whitewater. No. Gotta love it. This is exactly, John, what you want to. Th this really shows you what kind of a group of kids you have, you know, when you get in a game like this. You keep playing hard. Hey, they don't. Telling them, hey, we don't practice all week just to come out here now and once the score gets like this, just to kind of quit and go through the motions. Play hard. Oh. You know? Smart decision. Just when things are going well for Whitewater now, ball all the way back to the 42. So a you said earlier, nine it just yard seems loss. like they just haven't even been able to put two plays together, two like big plays. And I tell you what, once once they start being able to do that, then they start to turn the corner a little bit and yep. been their own worst enemy at times. Yep. But again, looking for that those positives on each possession. Absolutely, John. As well as that's what we're going to attempt to do here, too, as broadcasters. Yeah, Went out some kids that are doing some uh, some nice positive things. Going to air it out into the end zone. Irwin goes up and gets it. Wow, that was a jump ball there. And great position. Good vertical. Looks like he might have got a finger in the eye. Yep. I think that's really nice. He's hurting. Aiden Irwin is only 5'9", 155, but what great position he had on this, John. Let's take a look. Played it perfectly up there. Oh, yeah. Wow, interesting uh, intended receiver. Right got, his, the face mask. got his hand right inside the face mask. Yep. Some may have differing opinions on that one. New quarterback in for yep, the Spartans. Gavin Wood. Is that right? Gavin Wood, number 15. Frazier tripped up. 
And it tripped over number 62, Evaristo Soto, just a sophomore. Again, just half a dozen seniors on this Whitewater team. So much of what you see out there for the red and white will be back next year. Yep. Again, that new conference with Edgewood and Monroe coming in. Going to move this conference up definitely a notch or two. In fact, Monroe, they may come in as the favorite next year. We shall see. That's your stomping grounds, John. Yeah, so they handled, easily hit. handled Watertown last week and got some good younger skill players. And so it'll be, it'll be a different look conference next year, mm -hmm. at least in football. Wood's going to keep it, get out over the 15. Again, probably better off not having yeah, Jeremiah in the game at this point. Right, yep. A little experience here because who knows down the road. Like I said, uh, our last home game, he came out, he cramped, which put Nick Hall back in at quarterback, and I think they'd like to see about developing, you know, some other kids here. We're going to kick it away, which is what we would expect. Right. Nice job by Gunther Switzer out there on the line tonight. The Gunther, just a sophomore, 220 yeah. pounds. Matt Amrine, something doesn't look right. Did we not have enough players on the field or a delay a game? All right, guys, let's pick it up. One thing you can't do here is get sloppy in a game like this. Well, because or as soon as you relax or get sloppy, John, that's when injuries happen. Well, the thing is, with the continuous clock, the clock is running through this penalty. It is, this John, is gonna be right a, now, so we're in running clock time. Yep, I this can't is, this is going to be about a two-minute fourth down. Amrine gets it off. Nice kick. Drives Gonzalez back. Uh-oh, and he touched Look it. Look at this. Hey, he's uh -oh. going to come out and get a little bit of room. And he's tackled there by number 59, Jed Strait. So Amrine kicked that from the 11. And that ball was picked up at the 30. 59 yards. 59 yards, yep. That might help an average, huh? Yeah, take a look at a couple of Spartans on the defensive side here. Again, 58 is Jack O'Connor, 64, Colton White. Yep, let's try 88, it. Elijah Newman. Yep. These names mentioned, Summons in there. Up. Oh. Back went the opposite direction. Uh, Grasinski is not getting any help from his teammates there. Quarter runs out. I'm still waiting to see the Miller man get in. <laughs> Miller Raider. Remember when I had Miller in fifth grade, I used to always joke and say, you know, there's a park named after you in Milwaukee. He's like, what? It's like Miller Park. Of course, it might not be Miller Park anymore. Yeah, that's true. The old days, the stadium's names never change. Nope. Nowadays, they change every couple of years. John, how about this? I've been doing a Big K reflection every game, so let me shoot out this week's Big K reflection. Especially since I might miss the last game, so let me get this in here. It's this football season for the members of the team, coaches, teachers, parents, Sportscasters, spectators, and the community of McFarland mirrors and is re representative of life, daily life that's filled with many challenges, issues, positives, and negatives. This team is again this year to be commended as well as all the kids for all that they have faced many daily issues of injuries, year-round preparation, the classroom, and life itself. With the positive support of everyone, they have learned many life lessons and matured into fine young men. 
We salute you seniors for all you have accomplished during your four years at McFarland High School and wish you the very best in your future dreams. And for all you returning underclassmen to continue to make good decisions and strive to do your best both in and out of the classroom so that your future at McFarland High School will be as productive as it can be for you. So thank you all for a continued enjoyable 2019 football season. Nicely said. Oh, going to air it out long. Oh, that's going to be interference. Yeah. Aiden Irwin pulled. Again, when you lose sight of the ball, makes it tough. But again, Grosinski showing us the ability to throw that ball 40, yeah, 50 you. yards. Yep. I can tell you for a... Uh, So yeah, Bill, two more home games here, so hopefully you'll be able to make one of those. And so who do we have, John? We've got I think we've got Clinton for homecoming on the fourth, and then I believe we have Evansville. Oh, Evansville okay. may be one of the biggest stories in the state this year. I don't yes. know if they won a game at any level at the high school football last year, and this year now they're they're undefeated. Woo! Get a load of this score. Broadhead. And Beloit Turner, Beloit Turner in the third quarter. Beloit Turner 32, Broadhead Judah 27. An old fashioned That's shootout. That's a surprise, there. yeah. I would think that because Turner, what are they? They must be two and two. And I believe Broadhead's two and two also. Big game there. Yeah, I believe so. That's a big game. Just got that in for myself. A lot of balance in the in the Rock Valley Conference. Yeah, there is this year. It's good. Fun for kids. You know, it's like Clinton's obviously struggling this year. First and 10. Ball at the 46. 10-20 to go. Grosinski going to air it out. Overthrown. Semin there on the coverage. Also 15. Gavin Wood. Incomplete. Clock rolls. Continuous clock. Still waiting to see the Miller man get in there, number 65. <laughs> I think I see him over here on the sideline. Miller was refereeing the uh, flag football last week. He and Nick Hall. Really? That's kind of cool. I think uh, Zach Gunderson was over there refereeing, and that's great for the kids Isn't to be, that neat? Well, to be yeah, part of that. Because, hey, kids show up here, and these kids are kind of their heroes in that. And See if they're willing to put some time back into the youth programs and that. Pretty neat, John. Yeah, and there's Will Lybrand. Yep. But for the outstanding speed that he has, I tell you, McFarland has just contained him all night. Except for that big first run. Remember the first run of the ball game? And not 30 much yards. Since. Nope. Not much since is right. So Bill, we're nearing the nine minute mark. Just curious how many plays we'll see in the last nine minutes here. Fewer than a dozen? 15 maybe? Okay, I will keep track. I don't even know if it'll be that many. Unless somebody uses a timeout. We'll keep track and say. And again, every I remember one of these the old uh, that are overthrown, the ball to go retrieve it, get back oh, yeah. the Remember the old continuous clock games, you know, and summer basketball. And yeah. I got to coach with Brad Minter one year, and I remember I think we had a close lead, and we threw the ball out in the hall at MATC. It was an overthrow, and ball rolls down the hall, and heck, must have took two minutes off the clock, clock and movement. substituted free throws. And but it was just by accident. It wasn't there was by a, design, there right, was a John? way. There was a way to play the clock with a continuous <laughs> clock game. And, Oh, that was many years ago. So. I'm trying to think whose idea that would have been. Ooh, that's oh. picked off by number 30, Chase Quell. Oh. Second time we've mentioned Chase's name here tonight. So. How about that? Former teacher Mrs. Lackey watching at home. Chase Quell, many time fan of the game at girls softball over the years. Yeah, with his two sisters. Bill, I don't know if we'll see the 12 Sophie plays because we're down to seven and a half. Yep. 
The only bad thing sometimes about continuous clock is when you're trying to get some kids some experience. Yeah, get right? some snaps, and, and you just can't. Hey, and let them have an opportunity. I mean, gosh, John, they're they're working out year round. They're practicing every night. They're in the weight room year round. They're playing. They're going to camps and that. And let them be rewarded a little bit. Yeah, that uh, that's the one thing that. 64, Colton White in the game, six foot, 220 pound junior. I didn't realize some of these kids were this big until I looked at the program and I've watched them practice over at Wabisa and commented how small they were and seeing here, you know, a bunch of kids over 200. And right. A nice Brandon little run there. Dyer's Aguirre. Brandon, just a freshman. And I got to say, as many years as we've done these games, Bill, I don't remember too many freshmen up on no, our varsity. They just like his speed. Of course, Here's back it. in the day, you never saw freshmen on varsity in any sport. Right. Now it's uh, it's very common. Yes, it is. Evan Retkowski out there, number eight. He'll line up wide to the right. Oh, and he was down. Pick that ball up, Kevin Wood. Put his knee down. Again, this is where, uh, again, continuous clock, you just, the game pretty much has lost all interest now because it's just everybody's looking at the clock thinking, okay, yep. let's just go through the motions. Yep, and let's get it over with. And to be very honest, with you, if you're a player on the field, I mean, these kids are still going to play hard. You just do not want anybody to get hurt. So Matt Amrine in. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's still going to get plenty of time to get it off. Oh, and Matt. Still going to get some yardage out of this, too. Well, the probably going to go for almost 30 yards, but when you think about it, he kicked it from about... <laughs> 30 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Fans like it. Back on about the 15-yard line, getting a nice round of applause. I guess it went so far over his head. Oh, my. Tell you what, some of these linemen tonight going both ways the whole game. Whitewater not a lot of depth, so some of those boys have been out there just about every play. Ethan New quarterback is number six. Nice throw. Gonzalez oh, has very got it. Nice throw. Puts the head down, drives forward, down around the 41-yard line. Eli That's Cole. Eli Cole, I believe we've called his name in basketball. Yep. I want to say he might have been on varsity as a freshman. He's a junior. Yep. we got two boys that are both 6'3 back there at quarterback. I gotta love it, Gonzalez just put the head down. Now with four minutes to go, Whitewater, your goals change as the game goes on. They're not gonna win, but now your goal is, hey, let's get a score. Let's see if we can get that donut off the scoreboard. You're right, Chad. And for the Spartans, their goal now is keep them out of the end zone. Yep. Cole, gotta get rid of it. Boy, who oh. leaps? My goodness, is that 34? Paul Morris. 88, Elijah Newman. Boy, somebody just flew by in there yeah, like a bat. Yeah. It's like watching a bat fly. Yep. Chris Dressler, a freshman. Watch this there. Six feet there, two, there goes 40. Paul. <laughs> yep. 56, Ben Morales, a junior, 5'7", 165. Just mentioned some of the Whitewater kids. Josh Toms out here. Another sophomore, 5'9", 135, wide receiver. Mason Whoa. Simonson in. I don't think that was an intentional. Uh, he turned around, and there was nobody there. Boy, these are big size. That's a big quarterback. Yeah, Six, it's. Three. They're big quarterbacks in the conference. The Miller man, 65, Miller Raider. <laughs> Makes his appearance. Miller is just a sophomore. He's 5'9", 250. You've been calling for him, John. Paul Morris yep. in the game. Another freshman. 
175 pound freshman, number 34 for McFarland. At four years of varsity action, that's, yep. yeah, and that's not typical. Cole gonna air it out. Got a receiver in and out of his hands. Of number 10, And Gary that's uh, Garrig Monday, who gets the award for name of the night. Yep. Like we said, a baseball fan. Now, Lou Gehrig, Bill, played for? The New York Yankees. And then Rick Monday, again, we were. Lou Gehrig was, the, what was his nickname, John? The Iron Horse. Iron Horse, correct. I'm trying to think the trivia question is, he put that long streak of games played. And who broke it? No, the question was, whose spot in the lineup did he take? Babe Ruth? No, I, no. It's, it's not a household name, I don't believe, but that guy never got his spot back. So fourth down, big rush, gets it off. Incomplete. Seven, Ryan Vogel, a uh, sophomore, 6'3", 145, wide receiver coming in the game. Let's see, we have 56, I don't have 56. Austin Miller is the center. We got Austin Miller at center, Miller Raider at yep. guard. Colton White. Colton White. Is that Simonson at left tackle? Uh-oh. Wood's gonna run. Yeah, look at that. Knocked down around. You know what you gotta like here too, John? I mean, I like to say the fans say, hey, cheering these kids on too. You know, everybody could just kind of sit on their hands and say, let's let this game get over with and that. It's great to shout encouragement at these kids too. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, the clock's gonna run out here. Like I said, I understand the, the reason behind the continuous clock, but when you're trying to get kids into the game, yeah. I don't know if we put, Bill, I don't know if we had 12 plays in the quarter. I believe my count ended at 10, John. Well, that will do it here on Friday night. September 20th, yep. 2019. As the McFarland Spartans, for the first time this year, have a winning record now. They yep. go over the 500 mark. They are three and two. I believe next week they are at Bigfoot. Bigfoot plays tomorrow afternoon as they dedicate their brand new stadium and they are also recognizing their state championship team from 10 years ago and their coach from that team is coaching tonight and I think they're going to play tomorrow afternoon so they can get some of those kids back and the coaching cool. staff and I like that yeah field wasn't quite ready I guess at the beginning of the year but ready for their first game tomorrow artificial turf new cool. bleachers new everything down in in Walworth where you can see Illinois from the stadium but <laughs> We've put in a, uh, a night up here in the uh, tropical weather yep. <laughs> in our press box with the air conditioning not working. Of course, the air conditioning basically is open windows. But we saw a good effort offensively and defensively by the Spartans. They're going to pick up the 35 nothing win. They'll go to 3-2. and two. Again, you got to win five to be postseason eligible. So the Spartans with four games remaining on their schedule, it'd be great if they could run the table because they've got left with Bigfoot, Clinton, Evansville, and then finish the year with Broadhead, Broadhead Judah. So, Bill, we're all done here again. Yep. Lily and Ben and Ryan and Andrew. Yep. Andrew, he's ready to, he's got that cooler back behind us there and of soda. And uh, we're done. I mean, we're probably lost about 10 pounds up here tonight, Bill, <laughs> but we're, uh, we're stalling I'm here. I'm thinking we, I'm going to stay for the whole evening if that's the case. Yeah, I watch the managers pouring out those water bottles with the ice, and I'm thinking, geez, throw them up here. So that'll do it, though. Final score tonight from McFarland High School, Lloyd Schneider Stadium, Bill Rice Field. 
is McFarland 35, Whitewater nothing for Bill Cather. I'm John Wells saying thanks for watching.